If you love getting out there with your rig, this is an excellent topic for you today because this is going to be Boondocking 101. How's it going? Welcome to the Campendium YouTube channel where it's our hope and our goal to provide you with the, the resources and the information to get out there and camp. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about Boondocking 101 and the top five things that we recommend where you begin to get out there and enjoy some of these amazing places to camp. So um, you might be asking, what is Boondocking? Boondocking, what we're going to be talking about here is getting out there with your RV with no hookups. So no water, no sewer, no electric. Uh, none of those things. You're not going to a place where you're connecting your RV to any type of a grid system. So you're going to be out there boondocking in potentially the middle of nowhere. RVs are so great for this. You can take this living space and you can put it out in some of the most scenic, beautiful places for you to enjoy. So uh, let's dive into our top five list of boondocking 101. So first on that list is going to be safety. And in this, uh, we have know the size of your rig. So uh, you wanna be aware of the size of your rig. And this is where Campendium is a huge tool because you can get on Campendium and do a lot of research for where you want to go boondocking. You can read through reviews and what people have recommended for different sizes of rigs that have been out there before. Uh, you can find a lot Lot of information on the Campendium app or the Campendium website. So you want to do your research to see if you can get your rig back there safely. And uh, with that, you want to consider the weather because weather can change the conditions of where you're trying to get. So uh, pay attention to what the weather is, what the weather is going to be while you're out there uh, and give you an idea of what those conditions are going to be like. Because if you're out there on a road and it's good one day, if it gets wet, is it going to get real soupy and muddy and difficult to get out. You don't want to bury your trailer or your RV um, up to the axles trying to get out of where you're boondocking. So pay attention to the weather. Along those same lines, I'm just going to be aware of what I'm doing when I get out there. So I'm going to keep an idea in my mind of where I can back up, where I can turn around. Uh, so I kind of have an exit strategy if the site that I was going for doesn't exactly work out. So uh, be aware of those things. And then also once you're out there, uh, be aware of your surroundings. If there's a forest fire in the area, uh, because you're out boondocking and maybe not in a uh, an RV park or an RV campground, you may not have a ranger coming to knock on your door to uh, make you aware of maybe uh, rains or floods or uh, a fire. Uh, so just be aware of what's happening around you as you're out there. Number two on our list is leave no trace. The reason that you're going out there to enjoy this area is because it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be serene. So uh, leave no trace when you go out there. Uh, rule number one in this, if you're going to pack it in, pack it out. If you want to take uh, a step above that, take an extra trash bag and if you see some trash on the ground, uh, why don't you pick up a little trash and haul it on out so that it's just beautiful for the next person to show up. Another way to say this, I'm sure you've heard this before, is take nothing but memories and leave nothing but footprints. So uh, let's just be aware of the impact that you're having on the land when you go out. So it's best if you stick to existing roads so that you're not uh, tearing up more landscape and uh, use the roads that are already there. And along with that too, you can also use existing campsites, kind of established campsites that are already out there. So if it has a fire ring and you can tell somebody's already pulled up there and used it, rather than tearing up a new piece of the landscape, uh, you can use these areas that are already established. And when you're in that site, it's best if you can stay self-contained. So uh, don't be dumping your tanks on the ground. It, in some places, it's against the law to empty your tanks on the ground. So um, just remember, if you're going to pack it in, you might as well just pack it out. So um, that's a good rule to follow. Also, a uh, little message from Smokey the Bear, only you can prevent forest fires. That was a terrible impersonation. Maybe, maybe if I had like a bear head on my head, you know what, forget it. Let's just get back to it.
All kidding aside, it is a good idea to fully extinguish any campfire that you have um, after you've been out there to uh, make sure that it's completely snuffed out. No chance of you starting one of those devastating forest fires. You don't wanna risk uh, the forest, your life, or um, anything like that. Just make sure your fire is completely put out. And along with that, that thought, it's gonna be respectful towards wildlife. So respect wildlife while you're out there. Number three is a short one, but a goodie is just obey the rules. We covered some of the rules of above in the first two, uh, but you, you wanna be aware of the rules. A lot of places have a, a 14 day stay limit. Um, and there's just other rules with, with animals and, and fires and all those things. You just wanna check out the rules before you get out there and just obey the rules. Number four can actually just kind of apply to life. Just be a good neighbor. So first off, don't park obnoxiously close to somebody else. You're getting out there to have a little space, enjoy the serenity. Uh, so don't park too close to your neighbor. Get, give a little space to the people that are out there. And with that, looking for that serenity while you're out there, don't go crazy with the generator. Um, if, if your generator is gonna be running, use it to charge up your batteries. Try and run it as minimal as you can so that it's just not noisy for everybody uh, putting those fumes in the air. Uh, you're probably going out there to enjoy the peace and quiet. So just try and minimize how much you're using that generator. If you're using solar and you got a decent battery bank, uh, that's just a, a leg up, a step in the right direction to, to really just enjoying that boondocking location. And with keeping those couple of things in mind, just being a good neighbor, just be aware of how loud you are. You don't wanna be the loudest, most obnoxious thing out there. Again, you're going out there to enjoy this beautiful spot. Just enjoy it. And number five is just gonna be a few quick tips so that you can better enjoy it when you get out there boondocking. Number one, just be prepared. Uh, there's not gonna be a grocery store out there so that you can just grab a few more items. Uh, come prepared to, to be out there, have enough food, have enough toiletries, whatever you need need to be out there, uh, just be prepared for going out boondocking. And since you took these tips, you're gonna go out there prepared, uh, make sure you conserve what you do have, like conserve the water you have. Uh, if you're gonna take a, a shower, you can take a Navy shower, you can use close to like a, a gallon of water. You know, you get in there, you, you uh, get wet, you lather up after the water's been turned off, you turn it on real quick, rinse that off. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of water to do a Navy shower. So uh, there's plenty of ways that you can use to conserve water. Same goes for the electricity. If you can conserve on the amount of electricity that you're using, uh, that's less that you have to run your generator and the less noise you're gonna make when you're out there. So just be conservative of the things that you are using so you can stay out there even longer. Well, not past the 14 day limit, but you know what I mean. And last of all, just keep an eye on your wastewater tanks because I know that our wastewater tanks, our gray and our black, are not quite as big as our freshwater tanks. So we can haul out more fresh water than we can in our waste tank. So just be aware of how much you're putting in those tanks. So I hope you enjoyed this. Remember to get out there and camp. Enjoy some of these amazing boondocking places that you can find on the Campendium website or the Campendium app. I mean, there's just so many benefits to, to getting out there. A lot of times, uh, the cheaper the place you can stay in your RV, sometimes the more beautiful and the more serene. It kind of goes almost hand in hand. So, uh, plus, if you're out there, uh, you look way cooler carrying an ax out there in the woods than you would in an RV park. Actually, you might get called on, the cops might get called on you if you're walking around the RV park with an ax. So, uh, you never look more manly than when you're carrying an ax out there boondocking. But I think that's gonna do it for today. So uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, uh, give us a thumbs up. And as always, remember to get out there, keep exploring, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Some planes flying overhead. Noise pollution, what are you gonna do with that? Might as well run my generator right now. Just kidding, it's just a plane, it's fine.